Gender dysphoria is more common than you think. Around 1.5 million people in the USA is impacted. It is something that parents are worried about. Is there really a treatment for gender dysphoria or gender identity disorder? Today, we're diving into an important and often misunderstood topic, new treatments for gender dysphoria. This is a subject that affects millions of people worldwide, and it's crucial to understand the truth behind the latest advancements in medical and psychological care. First off, let's get on the same page. Gender dysphoria refers to the distress a person may feel due to a mismatch between their gender identity and their sex assigned at birth. It's not about wanting to fit in or making a trend. It's a very real experience that can deeply affect someone's mental health and well-being. Now, over the years, medical treatment for gender dysphoria has evolved significantly. The good news, new, more inclusive approaches are being developed that offer hope to those experiencing gender dysphoria. But, as with any medical treatment, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So today, we're going to explore the facts, the myths, and what you really need to know about these new treatments. Traditionally, treatments for gender dysphoria included psychotherapy, hormone therapy, and surgeries. These interventions helped many people align their physical bodies with their gender identity. However, as the understanding of gender becomes more nuanced, so do the treatments. We're now seeing innovations that go beyond the binary idea of male and female. One of the most significant advances in recent years has been the development of personalized care plans. No two individuals are the same, and neither are their needs when it comes to transitioning or managing gender dysphoria. Doctors are now working closely with patients to develop customized treatments that might include a combination of psychological support, hormone treatments, or even non-binary approaches that don't fit the traditional mold of transitioning, but here's where the controversy comes in. As with any new medical approach, there's pushback, some of it from well-meaning people, but also from misinformation and fear. So let's clear up some myths right now. First off, many people worry that new treatments are untested or unsafe, but that's not true. The new approaches being used today are based on rigorous research and clinical trials. Yes, the field is evolving, but that's a good thing. It means doctors are learning what works best for different people. Another common myth is that hormone blockers often prescribed to young people are harmful. But the fact is, hormone blockers have been safely used for decades, not just for gender dysphoria, but for other medical conditions too, like precocious puberty. They give individuals more time to explore their gender identity without the stress of going through puberty that doesn't align with how they feel. And let's not forget, gender-affirming treatment isn't just about surgery or hormones. Mental health support plays a huge role too. Therapists who specialize in gender dysphoria are now using more holistic approaches. Instead of focusing solely on the physical aspects of transitioning, they're helping people build resilience, self-acceptance, and manage societal pressures. Another new frontier? Non-binary care. For decades, the focus was mostly on binary transitions, male to female or female to male. But as more people identify outside the traditional gender binary, healthcare systems are adjusting. Today, doctors and mental health professionals are offering treatment options that affirm non-binary, gender fluid, and other gender identities. This can mean anything from partial medical transitions, like taking lower doses of hormones, to no medical intervention at all. It's all about what feels right for the individual. So, what does the future hold for gender dysphoria treatment? Experts say we can expect even more personalized approaches, better mental health support, and a shift towards creating environments that reduce the need for drastic medical interventions. As our understanding of gender grows, so too will the ways we support people experiencing gender dysphoria. 
The ultimate goal? To create a world where everyone feels comfortable in their own skin, whether that means transitioning or simply being accepted for who they are. Thanks for watching. We hope this video shed some light on the new treatments for gender dysphoria and cleared up some of the misconceptions surrounding them. If you found this information helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. And remember, everyone deserves to live authentically, whether that means transitioning, not transitioning, or simply figuring it all out. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other.